Hello, welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda. My hair's a little bit messy. Sorry, it's Friday. So we're back with Five on Friday after a little slightly longer than expected hiatus. <laughs> um, Five on Friday was started by, started by Suey over at Suey's Book Banner, um, <clears throat> where each, she's taking a little hiatus from right now, but the idea is each Friday we give you um, a themed list of books. The theme could be anything. Um, Suey's videos were always very well edited and they had music and they're all slick. Mine were, um, and usually are. Uh, I set a timer for five minutes and I just try to do it everything in five minutes without any editing. I'm not doing that this time. So the reason, if you aren't aware, the reason why I did not have, have not had a five on Friday up for the last couple weeks is we had spring break and then spring break did not end the way we expected and we ended up coming back late. Um, we got back late on Thursday. I just didn't have time to do a five on Friday and I didn't have the bandwidth at that point to do it. Um, was not the best spring break. There's a whole video vlog on what happened. Basically, family got COVID, dad in the hospital. We ended up having to drive home, blah, blah, blah. You can watch the video if you wanna watch that. The Saturday before that though, so the first Saturday we were down in Arizona, um, I got some very bad news that one of my closest friends, her name is Susan, uh, passed away. It was not unexpected. She, in the fall, was diagnosed with a form of leukemia. It was pretty serious. She was able to get a bone marrow transplant but getting part, getting the bone marrow transplant, part of it is they obliterate your immune system. That's just what happens when you get it. Um, and then the idea is you build it back up, right? Um, after the transplant, she started having some troubles and then I, I, I'm not a doctor, so I don't, <sighs> Bookish Breast Friend is a doctor. She could explain this better than you, better than I could, excuse me. Um, basically something happened. They realized after a little while, it took them a little while to get to this point, they realized it was meningitis. Um, as Bookish Best Friend explained it to me, it was probably something that was just in her system. And if you had even the slightest shred of an immune system, it would have fought it off, but she didn't even have that. And um, that was it. You know, she, she lasted a little bit and then that. So I'm giving myself the grace to edit this video if I need to. Um, I am not gonna rush through things. But I am going to give you a themed list of five books. And these are five books that, for various reasons, remind me of Susan. Um, and you'll probably get to know a little bit about Susan as I go through this. So um, the first book I'm going to talk about is one everyone knows, everyone knows really well, and that is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Susan was an attorney. She was a prosecutor, and then she went to go work in the state appeals office. Um, but, you know, Atticus Finch was a character that embodied a lot of her ideals. And that was a book that was very important to her. Not surprising. Um, she was, I don't think she ever read Ghost Set of Watchmen. I think she heard enough about this that said no, which I don't blame her. There's bad juju around that book. It's not a sequel. Anyway, um, but you know, Atticus Finch was always like the ideal character, the ideal person in her mind because of his, you know, his moral stance and the way he conducted himself as, um, as an attorney and um, it was something that she sort of strived for. So that's book one, To Kill a Mockingbird. The next book is The Doomsday Book by Connie Willis. And I'm including this because that is the first book she ever recommended to me. Um, and it was way back when we met. We met like t over 20 years ago. Um, we were in, in kind of a social group and we realized we both graduated from William and Mary. She graduated 10 years before I did. Or she would put it, one of us was 10 years before the other. <laughs> um, but she recommended the Doomsday book to me. And if, this is by Connie Willis. It is sci-fi. Um, I, I, science fiction is kind of an interesting genre because there's things in it that I think just kind of get thrown into sci-fi, but they really aren't sci-fi. And a lot of that is like time travel-ish. Um, lots of times when you do a time travel book, it feels a lot more like historical fiction. And that's what this is. But now my degree is in medieval history. She thought I'd really like this book. And I did. Um, and she was a big fan of Connie Willis's. This is about, um, you know, a scholar in the present day, present day as of when the book was written, who is sent back to medieval period right before the Black Death. And it's sort of her experience. It's a, it's a time travel book. It's very entertaining. I've not read it in several years. I don't know how it holds up, but that is the first book that Susan ever recommended to me. Um, so, you know, I can't think of the Doomsday book without thinking of Susan. 
Now the next book is actually a series of books and it kind of makes sense that it comes from the dooms it follows the doomsday book because they definitely have similarities not in tone <laughs> at all but in sort of content and this is um the chronicles of saint mary and the first book is just one damn thing after another this is a time travel series it's very wacky it is very funny um it is I don't know what the publishing deal of it is. I do know that it's only available if you get the audiobooks. It's only available on Audible. So it might be like a Amazon house published book, but the, there's a big long series of it. I'm not, I have it up here on my computer and give it away there. Uh, seven, 11, 12, 13. Looks like there's thir 14. <laughs> 14 books plus a bunch of novellas. Cause I think like every year a Christmas novella would come out. And she lived for these. Like, she, she looked forward to these every year. She loved this series. I personally have only read the first one, which is just one damn thing after another, which is hilarious. There's The only reason why I haven't read on or listened on is because I just haven't had the, the hole in my reading schedule to do it yet. But they are a lot of fun. And they're very wacky. And in a lot of ways, they really kind of captured her sense of humor. If you ever met Susan, one thing you would know about her is she had a laugh that would fill a room. Like it was loud. It just, it was a full body laugh. And um, this, these, the series really kind of met her sense of humor in a lot of ways. And um, it's, it's, so like the Doomsday book, it was time travel, but the history was really strong in it. Um, it really was like a study of life of, you know, 14th century life compared to, I think it was 20th. I don't know, can't remember exactly when that book was published. But the Chronicles of St. Mary is just wacky. Like you don't go to this book for historical fact. <laughs> it's just wackiness. Um, and it's a lot of fun. And I am going to plan to, I do plan to continue reading in it. So the fourth book, I actually don't know if Susan read. Um, and that book is Babel by R.F. Kuang. So I read this book last year, last summer. And Susan decided she wanted to read it and she started it on audio and the audio wasn't working for her. And for some reason she didn't want to do an ebook. I can't remember why she wanted to do an ebook, but then I said, well, I have a print book. You can have my print book because I liked it, but I didn't like it enough to keep it on my keeper shelf. And, um, so in October we met for witching tea, uh, Susan and I and bookish best friend would always go to tea together um, at this place that these themed teas they do like Harry Potter tea and witching tea and Dickens tea a bunch of them and so we went to the the witching tea and um I brought the book to her and that was the last time I saw her before she went to the hospital that was on a Saturday um and we were talking she had been sick she had like a cold and I had had a cold and she said well I just I'm just short of breath and I can't get past that. And I didn't think anything about it because I had had a cold and I was short of breath. You know, to me, that was just like a natural thing. Kind of you're getting over a cold. Um, but she said, you know, I'm kind of sick of it. So I'm going to go to the doctor. Um, that was on Saturday and on Wednesday or Thursday, she went to the doctor and then spent the next two months in the hospital before she was released. Um, she did, she was able to go home for a while and then, um, she went back into the hospital for her bone marrow transplant and that was about it. Um, so I don't know if she ever read Babel. Um, I mean, she was in the hospital a long time. She had a lot of reading time, but also, you know, I do know that from other people I know who've gone through chemo, your brain isn't really with you the whole time you're with chemo. So Babel might have been too much for her at the time. I don't know. Um, but that book will always be tied for me because that was the book I gave her last time I saw her. Okay, finally, um, last one. And this is the biggest of them. This is another series. Um, this is another series I think a lot of you have read. Uh, Susan was many things, but she was the biggest Potterhead I've ever met. This woman loved Harry Potter. She was not a big fan of J.K. Rowling after, you know, you know. But she loved Harry Potter. She um, went basically, I know she went to London and then she went to New York and then she went to San Francisco to see like Harry Potter and the Cursed Child when it came out. She like, we would go to the Harry Potter tea and there would always be a trivia thing and like super hard trivia. And she would like rush right through it. She knew all of the answers like immediately. Um, the first time I ever took a lift, I'd gone to see a play in downtown Portland with Susan and Bookish Best Friend and um, 
because of eye issues, I don't drive at night. So I had gotten a lift home and it's the first time I'd ever done it. And my lift driver was really into Harry Potter. Like his car was decorated with Harry Potter, which was fine if you kept talking to him about Harry Potter, but like conversation got kind of weird. If like he got off Harry Potter, he started talking about all his family that was in prison. It was really weird. So I was like in the back of the car texting Susan going, give me some Harry Potter stuff to talk about. <laughs> so just trying to keep the lift driver talking about Harry Potter. So he didn't freak me out. Um, Susan, Susan was a dog person. She always had dogs and, um, her canine companion, her last canine companion was this wonderful dog that she adopted that she named Neville, Neville No Bottom, because he had to never tail. So she named him Neville No Bottom. Neville is now living with her brother. So he has, he didn't have to go to a stranger's house. His, his brother, her, her brother adopted him. Um, she, uh, as I said, she was an attorney. She was, you know, a force to be reckoned with, very professional, but she also had her whole like sh arm and shoulder was a huge tattoo of Hedwig. <laughs> so she was like, she had the big Hedwig thing and she was just, she was the Harry Potter person. And I like Harry Potter. I'm not totally into him like he, like she was, but you know, I loved that for her. And that, that just, she's Harry Potter. I mean, Harry Potter was her thing. And um, yeah, we would always, so we were in book clubs the whole time we knew each other, which means we were in book clubs when the Harry Potter books were coming out. Maybe not the first couple ones, but like the later ones. So we would always have, when a Harry Potter book was, was released, we would have a book club on it. <laughs> and she was so into it. She just knew everything. And sometimes her father, who was alive at the time, would join us. And her father and I had, we had some great discussions, but yeah. Harry Potter. So, so yeah, that's Susan. Um, so I'm going to end this now because I've had to edit a lot out. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe. I'm going to leave it at that. Bye.